The Way of Love In 1 Corinthians 13.13, 13, the Apostle Paul writes, So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. February is considered the love month. However, for us, that we are followers of Christ, love is for every single day of the year. According to the Word of God, love is not a choice. If you are in Christ and Christ is in you, then love is also in you. What God says about loving others. We have been called to actively love others, no matter the situation. And in doing so, we can inspire others to act with love as well. What does God say about love? What is love according to the Bible? We have been given an abundance of Bible verses about loving others, so we can assume it's important. John 13, 34 through 35 says, and so I am giving you a new commandment to you now. Love each other just as much as I have loved you. Your strong love for each other will prove to the world that you are my disciples. We are commanded to love one another as Jesus loves us. As Jesus loves. There is not one person Jesus does not love and did not come to serve or to save. This includes everyone you lock eyes with, everyone you walk past on the street, everybody that you hear about in the news, that you live next door to or stand behind in line at the grocery store or sit next to in the waiting room. When we actively love those around us, and put their needs before our own, we take the same amazing love that Jesus has poured out to us and become a living, breathing, beautiful display for humanity. It is such an amazing, sweet fragrance that a loving person from their body, from their spirit. It is a sweetness. It is something special that you can tell that a person is different. And that is what love does. When love is the center of that person, that person is practicing love you can tell because there is a certain graciousness. When there is pride, when there is arrogance, there is usually anger, there is usually offense. Those feelings are all synonymous with pride. And the person that is prideful has a problem loving others unconditionally. And that is what love really boils down to. We're living in a world where love is confused with lust. Because truly love is sacrificing for another because love requires sacrifice. It could be minimal or it can be major, but it requires sacrifice. You see, while many believe just love is just a nice heartwarming feeling, as Christians, we are called for it to be more than that, we are called to take action. We can share God's love by noticing the unnoticed, loving the unlovely, 
or even by extending grace to those who are not so easy to be loved. When we look at how to love others, the word offers plenty of insight in Romans 12 verses 9 through 10 and 13 through 16, the message translation gives us a great example of love in action. And it says, love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear, dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply Practice playing second fiddle. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Let's make it our prayer today to ask God to help us actively to love others, to actively walk across the street to help our neighbors, to actively cook a warm meal, meal for a friend in need, or to actively visit a nearby nursing home to love on the elderly. Let us ask him to lead us to places where he wants us to shine his light and ask the Lord for his courage and strength to share his love with all who surrounds us in our daily lives. And maybe when we do this, we will guide people to his beauty and they too will begin to actively love others. And then who knows how many lives will be impacted. We can share God's love by noticing the unnoticed, loving the unlovely, or even by extending grace to those that are not so loving. And this verse in the first in the verse of uh, First Corinthians 13, 13, uh, Paul writes also about faith and hope. Now faith, let's talk about faith. It's the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith brings healing and prosperity, peace, love, joy, sanctification of the mind and the emotions. Faith is trusting in God and living with purpose. Hope is the perseverance of faith, the firm expectation that God who can be trusted will fulfill all that he has promised. So now imagine a hopeless love. If our love for God has no expectations at all, we will end up for God's glory and our good. Then that love becomes a fickle and momentary thing, a mere subjective emotion, detached from commitment and covenant, devolving into something shallow, well wishes, and general niceness. So in this passage, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, but the greatest of these is love. So how can we be more lovable this month? How can we practice to be, uh, practice to, in being more lovable? Is it possible to get out of our comfort zone this month and start practicing ways of being more lovable? How about if we are more lovable with ourselves, so then we can be more lovable with others? Something to think about. The degree in which you reverence God will be the degree of love that you extend to others. If you treat others rudely, if you treat others less than how they deserve to be treated as children of God, it is a direct correlation 
with your reverence to God. In other words, your reverence to God will always be apparent and evident in the way that you treat others. So let us love one another more this month. Let that habit or that action become a habit. Let it become a mission in our lives so that when February is gone and March rolls around the corner, we can have some love habits in place that we can start inspiring others with our love so that they can be more loving as well. Love is something contagious. It really is. It's contagious. And hate and negativity is also contagious. So we need to choose what we are going to transfer to other people. So we are carriers of whatever it is that we're giving out to others. And so we are like, just like we are carriers of viruses and, and germs and bacteria, we are also carriers of really good things like love and mercy and kindness and, and faith and peace. So let's give that out this month. Let's start practicing a love walk that is amazing, that is something that people will, um, they will smell an aroma that does not come from expensive perfume, but it comes from the love of God inside of you and the love that you have for God that will be poured out and be evident in the way that you love others. Let us pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you. We bless you. We thank you, Lord, Lord that we can love others because you first loved us. We know how to love because you loved us, God. You loved us first. And that is the only way that we can describe how love, my Father, is evident or it is present in us. If there was no love in the world, we would be totally selfish, totally self-centered people. My God, if, the, if you were not in our lives, we could not be loving or practice to be more loving with others. I can't imagine a world without love, Lord God. And you have provided us with that blessing and that treasure of being able to love others, Lord God. In our smallness and in our weakness, these are perfectly known to you, my Father. Pull us out of the mud itself so that we may not be stuck in it forever. Lift us out of that place, my Father, of negativity, that place, my Father, of envious or jealousy, that place of comparisons, that place of divisiveness, the place where we are, we don't like certain races or we are critical of certain cultures. Lord, forgive us, my Father, because when we get to heaven, my Father, we are all going to live together. My God, may we learn to live together upon this earth, my God. Strengthen us in our resolutions, God. We have often failed, but we depend on you and you alone to help us. We seek your advice, we seek your direction, we seek your counsel, and only in this way can we hope to make any process progress in true, solid virtue, in the virtues that are not going to be present today and gone tomorrow, the virtues that are 
that, that anchor us, my God, the virtues that, the, of faith, hope, and love. These are our anchors, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord. We want to become that person. We want to become a more loving person as you have called us to be. Help us, Lord God, and give us new strategies and help us and show us people that we should be loving on, that we can love more, my God. And we just give you all the praise in the name of your Son, Jesus, precious Son, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, the, the love, the, the God of love. Thank you, Lord. Amen.